Hey guys, welcome back. I just want to make a quick mention. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions in from differential calculus, but we actually need questions now based on analytical geometry for grade 12. When you send in your questions, guys, please send in uh, a video. You can send it on our WhatsApp uh, line. Just take a video of yourself, asking the nice question, hold up the question long enough so we can see what it has to say. Uh, we've got a question now from Chardonnay. Let's have a look at what she has to say. I'm Chardonnay. I come from Florida Park High School and I have a question for you. Okay, thank you for that very lovely question. Uh, guys, let's have a look at what the question has to ask. So the question is as follows. It says, for a certain function f, the first derivative is given as f of x, uh, uh, sorry, uh, f prime of x, 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. And they're asking us to calculate the x coordinates of the stationary points of f. Okay, guys, so let's have a look at what we've, got, what we've been given over here. What we have over here, we've got some derivative which, is, which forms a parabola. That is the de uh, derivative function and that tells us the equation of all the gradients of my original function. Now I'm going to draw something down for us over here that I can give you an idea of what exactly we're looking at. And it's quite helpful. So what we have over here is we're going to have some cubic function. I'm trying to draw it as best I can. And we're going to have... It's going to be on a set of axes and we're going to have a parabola which is going to be my derivative function and what's important is that at certain points specifically my stationary points is when my parabola is going to cut my x-axis so i'm going to draw that in a different color for us so we can see okay so that's what we have over here this parabola over here is going to be the equation that has been given to us and you can see that my stationary points is where my parabola cuts my x-axis. So we're going to use this to our advantage. We're going to then say my f prime of x, and we're going to equate this to 0 to solve for my stationary points. So we have f prime of x, and we're going to equate this to 0 to solve for my stationary points. So my f prime of x is going to be 3x squared, plus 8x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let me see if I remember that correctly. Yes, I did. Clever me. Okay. Okay, guys, so what we have at this point, we got a trinomial. We can solve it. I like to solve trinomials using what's called a grouping method. So we're going to take 3 multiplied by 3, and we get 9. And we're going to find my factors of 9 that give me my middle term, and that's going to be 1 and 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3x squared plus 9x minus x minus 3 is equal to 0. So what I've done is I've replaced this 8x by 9x minus x. Guys, when it comes to this in your exam, you're welcome to use any method whatsoever. You can use a grouping method, you can use your quadratic formula, whatever you're most comfortable with, you can do. Um, I'm just going to use uh, the grouping method. So we have over here, we can take out a 3x we left with x plus 3, and if we take out a negative 1, we left with x plus 3 again, and that's going to be equal to 0. If we then factorize this further, we have 3x minus 1, and we're going to have x plus 3 equal to 0. Okay, so at this point in time, we can use my product 0 theorem. That states if I've got two factors equal to 0, those two factors will then be, one of them, if, if I make x equal to 0, it'll be a factor. So I can say then that x is going to be equal to 1 over 3, and x is going to be equal to negative 3. Now these are my values for my stationary points. So I'm going to go back up to the top of here, because this is going to help me later on. I can say then that my 1 value is going to be 1 third, so that's going to be 1 over 3. And this other value is going to be 3. Okay. Hey guys, so what we have over here, remember, when you're trying to find your stationary points, it's equating your first derivative equal to 0. If it is a cubic function, you then solve that uh, quadratic equation. Let's have a look at the next part of the question. So the next part says, for which values of x is f concave down? 
Okay, guys, so what this means is, right, when we have concavity, our graph changes shape. So we have, actually have a cubic function, and at this point over here, my, my cap and my cup changes. If you want to look at it that way, my concavity changes. And that happens at my point of inflection. So to find my point of inflection, um, we are then going to take my second derivative, and we're going to equate that to zero. So if you remember, my first derivative was equal to 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. So if we take my second derivative and equate it to 0, we're going to have 6x plus 8 is going to be equal to 0. If we then solve for x, we have that x is going to be equal to negative 8 over 6. And that there gets me a value, if I just simplify that, negative 4 over 3. So what this means is, guys, they're asking for which values is x concave down. So concave down means that my graph is actually forming a cup. So at this point of inflection of negative 4 over 3, my graph then starts looking like a, little, like a little camel's hump. And we can have a look at that on my diagram that I drew previously. I've got some point of inflection over here. And that's going to be on my parabola. That'll be negative 4 over 3. My diagram is not that accurate, but it was just to show you that at this point of inflection, going this in this direction, my graph then has concavity, which is down. So we can then say that my x for concave down, x has to then be less than negative 4 over 3. Okay, let's have a look at the next part of this question. There we go. Okay, so it says here, determine the values of x for which f is strictly increasing. Okay, so for which values is f strictly increasing? Now I want to go back to my diagram that I drew. That's quite helpful, this diagram over here. We have, when is f increasing? Okay, guys, so we can see that my... My original function, this white line over here, is increasing when my values are greater, uh, the x greater than 1 over 3, and it is less than 3. Okay? If we want to solve this in another way, we can say then that, well, if, if I want to solve this, we can say my quadratic function equal to 0. If it's increasing, where is that quadratic function then positive? If I solve that greater than 0, I can then find these exact values. But having a diagram is always easier to use because I like to think visual. I'm a visual learner and I can then see straight away on my diagram, well, when is my, per when is my cubic function going upwards? And that is always going to be when my parabola, which is the, uh, the first derivative, is going to be positive and that lies above the x-axis. Okay, so that means then, let me go check those values out one more time. I then have 1 over 3 and x is less than 3. Whoops, that's the wildcard question that Sia did earlier. Let's go write that down. So x is going to be strictly increasing when x is going to be uh, less than negative 3, or we're going to say that x is going to be greater, uh, greater than 1 over 3. Okay, guys, so that, that's question done. Uh, Chardonnay, thank you very much for that question. Let's go over a few more things just before we carry on and uh, I let you guys go on by yourself. So when we have a derivative function, it is quite useful to draw it. And remember those points where my x-axis or where my, where my derivative cuts my x-axis, that's going give, to give me my stationary points of my original uh, function. Okay, guys, so that is a very lovely question. It tells me a lot about my concepts that I'm using and you're going to get these types of questions in the exam. Um, guys, that's all we have time for today. I'd just like to thank uh, Liberty. They've been a really great sponsor for the show. Uh, you can always use, if you want to see more concept videos and the career videos that we show on Yeah, you can download the app. It's available on our Android and iOS. Guys, please send in your questions on analytical geometry. Remember, send your WhatsApp. Guys, that's all we have time for today. We'll see you again next week. Have a good one, guys.